Are you looking at purchasing Singapore U.S. edition for third grade? Stick around. I'm going to show you what's inside. Hi, I'm Rebecca with the Parent Teacher Bridge, where you can find the ideas and solutions you need to empower you to be your child's most influential teacher. Today, I'm going to show you a little bit of the Singapore U.S. edition third grade math book. So first of all, if you are getting Singapore U.S. edition, it usually consists of four workbook, four books. They all look like workbooks, but one is going to be, actually two are going to be textbooks and two are going to be workbooks. They're all the same size. They will either come in 3A or 3B, and they look a lot of like. Um, the 3B workbook and the 3A workbook, you can see they're slightly different shades as will the textbook be. And actually, I bought the textbook for my oldest when he was doing this, and I did not keep it because of the age difference, how many years I would have to keep it. When it came time for my second child, I actually did not even purchase the textbook because I'd used it before, I knew what I was doing, all of that. So if you are new to this, you will probably buy the two workbooks for the fall and the spring and the two textbooks for the fall and the spring. These somewhere run around $15 or so per little booklet, okay? So that's 60-ish uh, for the school year. You can sometimes find the textbooks free, uh, not free, <laughs> discount on um, eBay, or if you are in your little homeschool groups where you buy and sell and trade, you could find them for even cheaper than that. So we just worked out of the workbooks this particular year. And the 3A, let's look inside this one. Now, if you've watched my other videos about the Singapore math, you know that the textbooks are in color. They give a mini lesson for you to talk through with your child. And then it will say at the end of that, this co corresponds with workbook, lesson, whatever. Um, so let's look at this one. For 3A, they are working with larger numbers up to the 10,000s. A lot of practice with addition and subtraction. They don't just forget about addition and subtraction just because they're now in the multiplication years. Uh, by unit three or chapter three, they are doing multiplication and division and they will work in some review pages. These could be used as study guides or if you wanna use it as a test with your kid, you could. Um, and then they hone in on particular multiplication tables like the sixes, sevens, eight, and nines. They do touch on money and then they give some more review. And that is the fall semester. Um, on the inside, you'll see different little pictures where they have to work with expanded form and standard form. They'll be adding larger numbers. Uh, and then these are some of the fact pages. You can see that my child is a doodler. And then they still have the word problems. I talked about the word problems earlier. The review pages, let me show you what one of the review pages look like. All right, so this is about halfway through the fall semester and they have to complete part of a multiplication chart, uh, fill out the rest of the pattern, work with a fact family, break down the number into expanded form, and then they have to um, use some greater than less than experience here and then jump ahead and jump behind whether they're adding or subtracting onto a larger number. And then they have some word problems. So that's what a review looks like. Let's look at the spring semester workbook. Again, sorry I don't have the textbooks to show you, but by the time I got to my second child doing it, I just didn't see a need so much. My kids were catching on just fine and it was a time saver and a money saver. So first part, they're gonna work in some mental calculation. Although these books are not common core, some of the things you might see in Common Core instruction where they are learning how to solve things mentally uh, kind of cross over with some of this, and that's not all bad. While I didn't want Common Core, it doesn't mean everything in Common Core is, you know, not a value. So I do like how it helped them to mentally calculate some things. Uh, works on length, weight, then some more review, capacity, graphs, that's a big one. Fractions. A lot of people love fractions. A lot of people hate fractions. So which one will it be for your kid? Drop me a comment below. And then learning to tell time. If you watched my second grade Singapore video, you know that I suggested that you get 
a small Judy clock if you're learning to tell time. Geometry, area, and perimeter. Okay, so let's see what some of the pages look like. You can see here that I would just put check marks if my kid got them right. Now, I never bought the teacher manual. I didn't see a need to. If you would like, you could buy a teacher manual. Um, and the other thing was, yeah, I guess the teacher manual probably has an answer key. I was just able to eyeball it and see, you know, that my kid had the right answers. So this is some of the stuff that you might see in some of the Common Core books, even though this is not Common Core, where they're just breaking things down. Number bonds is what they're called a lot of the time. They may be in different shapes. Um, they really get the kids used to measurement. For example, if you have one kilometer and you take away 70 meters, how many meters will you have left? Some good old word problems. My kids are never scared of word problems because they've had this capacity. You could work in some kitchen time uh, to help your children get familiar with that. The graph section is kind of fun. Kids, you normally love those. Okay, so what can you do if your kids are having a little bit of a hard time is you can pause on something. Let's say you get to the fraction section and it's kind of difficult. You could print out fraction manipulatives online. You got a printer? You got paper? You got scissors? Especially if you have colored ink, but if you don't, and I've dealt without colored ink many years, <laughs> you can color something. And then you can cut out fraction circles or a fraction bar and just play with them for a little while. You say, you know what? This is a little bit hard for my kid right now. I'm gonna stop with book work for a while and I'm gonna print out some things. Let's say you don't know what direction to go with that. Well, you could hop online to something like Teachers Pay Teachers where some of the units are free and just get something for that grade level or get something that's beginning fractions and print it out. And it might be something just different and fresh and fun that you could use for a week or two with your kid and then you can get back on it. That is how I handle curriculum that's not perfect because no curriculum is. The other thing is I work in apps like for um, math fact practice and I'll leave a link in the description below but I did a review on the Teach Me Math Facts app so you'll want to check that out as well. Go check out some of my other videos because I have reviewed the first grade book and the second grade book. I use Singapore Math US Edition from kindergarten all the way to fifth grade with all three of my kids. Um, well, with the exception of the one going into fourth grade this year, but she's gonna follow that same path because I know it, I'm comfortable with it. There's no need for me to change, even though there are other good math curriculum out there. These are the math books that I used for all three of my children. My oldest is going into 10th grade, my second oldest is going into sixth, and my last child is going into fourth grade. And I can tell you that these uh, books gave a really good foundation, really solid foundation for my kids in math. A little bit about myself, I do have, an exper have experience teaching math at the elementary and middle school level in public and private schools. So I did have a little bit of my own stuff that I sprinkled in along the way. You'll hear me say this in multiple videos, but there's no such thing as a perfect curriculum. So I always encourage parents that if they need to put something back on a shelf for a while and then revisit it later, that is perfectly okay. And that's a little bit about what I did with some of these. So I'll talk about that as we go along there. So remember, check those things out, like and subscribe. And if you have questions or a suggestion, leave it in the comments below. Parents, you are your child's most influential teacher. Remember that.